wedge. A splitting wedge is very important. Uh, one thing I like to emphasise is don't use a cross wedge on a splitter this big, especially um, these ones on the wedge that's fixed. As everyone knows, strain hub is hard. Uh, it's varied in grain, and grain can wave. If you get one of those wedges caught, uh, it's got nowhere to go. So between your cross wedge and your beam, something's going to give. Generally, it's the beam or your cross wedge. Um, you can spike all these off. Uh, you can split and damage cylinders. So it's very important that do not use them. Um, if something goes on sideways, it goes out sideways. It's not going to. Um, it's not going to. There's nothing you can damage out here. It might bend these or so forth. Um, but you'll notice with our wedge design, we've got the sharp cutter edge on here, and then we go to a quick wide part, and that comes down to all about cycle time. So your wedge cuts in, starts to split. Your bigger wedge comes in and busts it open. Uh, it means you generally don't have to go right through the log. You can get it in, bust it out, and like once again cutting down your cycle time. Because at the end of the day. Cycle times everything. You want to get in and out there as quick as possible. Uh, so very important. Everything. Just don't look at um, a cross wedge, thinking you're going to get it done quicker because it's four ways. Your damage is splitter, and um, yeah, then they're useless. Once you start getting bends in these, it makes it hard for your runners to go past. Bend your cylinder, break your cylinder, you're up for seals, um, all that kind of stuff. So is your hoses. We've got hose guard on all these. Um, which is just a, uh, a cover over your hose. If you blow a hose, um, it protects it. Um, and so it protects the operator so you don't get spurt of oil and things like that. Um, all these parts we keep in stock, so there's not a drum of any parts. Um, everything you see on the machine is in stock. Um, so yeah, all parts, um, it's all covered by warranty, so that's no dramas at all. We run a two-stage pump. Um, first stage is um, a quick stage, so it pushes it up, high flow, low pressure, get your ram up fast. Once it hits a hard log, most time the time, the high fast flow will go straight through the log. Once it does hit a hard log, it'll click over automatically into the slower stage, which is a high pressure, it'll go right up to 3,500 PSI. Everything slows down and it just pushes through. We've got the Briggs & Stratton on this one in particular, uh, 13 and a half horsepower, electric start. Uh, it's a fairly new range to our range. Um, they have sold very popular, very quick. So um, we also do a JD engine, 15 horsepower, also electric start. We do a diesel, which is electric start. They're a 10, 11 horsepower diesel. Um, there's no dramas running these either. We also do a pull start, and um, they're also good. That's just to cut down on cost. If you're a bit hard on cost and so forth, we do the, just the pull start to try to get you in. But everything's adaptable. They all come with a bracket to hold a battery box. So if down the track you want to add an electric start engine, it's no problem there either. Even the base plates are all pre-drilled for different entice engines. So just a matter of fitting your battery box, fitting your engine, and you've got an electric start and everything hooks up as per every other model. Also too, these I'd just like to talk about the type of splitter is. It will be horizontal and vertical. So all you do is click that back, throw it in the vertical stage, and if you've got a log that you just can't carry, you need a machine to put in, um, sit it on there, put it in, and it'll be no drama splitting. Also on this model we run 14 inch wheels, um, we've got mag wheels make it look fancy, uh, comes with the Australian standard um, tow hitch, um, also to the jockey wheel. Uh, you can't register them, don't ever think you can, anyone that claims they can register them, um, it's just pulling your leg. Um, you can tell them on a property, like we're on a property here in a couple hundred acres, so if we need to go to the job we can hook it onto our truck and away we go. We also carry the bigger work table um, and a guide. Um, it, these come in very handy once you split wood because you're not going to split it in half, you need to split it and break it down. So we normally split it, put it on there and as it's get broken down then we throw the broken down part into the um, broken part timber into the trailer as we go. Um, but if you cut, split that in half, we'll split the half, sit the half just on that and then we'll break it down from that. We also, these will take up to 600 long. Most people only use three to 400, but we make them so the 600 just in case. There's a few people out there with really big fires that want to split really big logs. So they will do up to 600 mil or 610 if you want to get technical, but 600 mil generally. Um, and as far as diameter goes, if you can get on there, it'll split it. Um, we haven't come across any yet. so. Uh, but generally speaking, three to 400 mil, so I always stop mine about there, just to stop, cut down the cycle time, very important. 
everything on here is steel. There's no plastic. Um, you've got your I-beam construction, which is very important, very strong, so it comes out of the mill as an I-beam. It's not welded, so it's, um, I suppose you effectively say it's like forged in. You'll notice that we've got a 50 mil base, solid base, a solid wedge, all the side tables are all steel. The steel tank that holds the uh, wheels on it, which is the hydraulic, is all steel. Um, we reinforce it all the back here, you'll see the um, reinforcement down there. Righto, so without wasting any more time, let's uh, see how this baby goes and I'm sure you'll be just as impressed as we are.